Hello and welcome. In this video I'm showing you how to get the top performing coins on the whole Binance platform over the last n minutes, hours, days or whatever time horizon you prefer. The cool thing about this video is you don't even need a Binance account to access those kind of information. Alright, so let's get started. As you see, I already imported some necessary libraries. We need pandas for data handling. TQDM enables us to get a progress bar for a particular loop we are currently running. And we need the client from Binance to get information from the Binance platform. First, we are instantiating the client. And this time, I'm not providing my API key and my API secret, as I just want to have information from Binance. I do not want to e.g. execute orders here. So, you don't even need an account to run this notebook here. Next, I'm using the get exchange info method from the client and store that in a variable info. And this will create a huge dictionary containing useful information from the Binance platform. And between those information, there are our symbols. So this dictionary is including all tradable assets and some more information on those tradable assets. So for example, ETH, BTC, Ethereum, in relation to Bitcoin, we see status trading, base asset, order types, and many more information. You can take a look at that for yourself. I'm only interested in the symbols here. So I want to filter this dictionary for, all, for only those symbols. Right? And with that, I should get all available symbols on Binance. So I'm using a list comprehension to achieve that. So we are taking symbol. So where is here? Symbol for X in info symbols. So again, what are we doing? We are just screening for the symbols here and then extract the particular symbol here. So with that, we are getting all available symbols. So let's actually take a look at how many are they? Wow, that's quite impressive. 1.7k symbols you can trade on Binance. Next, I want to exclude the leverage tokens. And what is a leverage token? Leverage token, so I'm, I'm just creating a list here, exclude. And I'm naming them, so a leverage token is including the name up, down, bear, or bull. Right, so let's actually write that down, exclude leveraged tokens. And now I'm using a list comprehension to get rid of those symbols which contain any of those strings here, right? So I'm calling that non-leverage or non-lev and now I'm using symbol for symbol in symbols if, and then I'm using an all method here, excludes not in symbol for excludes in exclude. Right, and with that, I'm just filtering out this up, down, bear, and ball. Right, so let's take a look at that. Now we have only 1.68k left, so not that many leverage tokens here. Now I have to filter out those symbols which are pairs, right? So all symbols which are not in relation to the US dollar uh, teacher, which is a stable coin representing the US dollar. So I wanna exclude, for example, ETH, BTC. I don't wanna have pairs here. I only wanna have the assets in relation to the USDT. So again, I'm using a list comprehension to achieve that. And now I'm calling that relevant and then symbol for symbol in non lev if the symbol ends with USDT. All right, and with that, I'm only getting the relevant symbols here. All right, so let's take a look at how many are left. So we have 298 uh, tradable assets in relation to the USDT. 
And now I'm just pulling price data for all those assets. Therefore, we are creating an empty dictionary, which we will populate with K-line data. So we are calling that K-lines. And now we are populating that in a loop. So we are looping through the relevant symbols and we are using TQDM to get a progress bar of this loop. And now we are just creating keys for all symbols. So we can just use K-lines symbol and then we want to populate that with using the historical get historical k-lines function from Binance. And inside here we are providing the symbol, then the interval, and then how much time you want to go back. So I'm working with one hour ago, but you can change that to your requirements, right? 30 minutes, 45 minutes, days, weeks or whatsoever. Right, and with that, if you don't have a typo like I have here, get historical K lines. And with that, you are getting this progress bar, and this will take some time, right? And there is a problem with that if you're using that, e.g., to create a bot. So it won't make a big difference, but just be aware of. So for the very first symbol, I'm pulling price data for the last one hour until now. Then one or two minutes are passing or even three minutes are passing. And for the last one, I'm getting the most recent price. So I have a slight lag here between the first and the last uh, iteration or between the iterations in general right so just be aware of that um, there are surely better ways to pull the data but i'm currently uh, don't have an idea how i would um, do that more efficiently here all right so until this is being done i'm cutting the video okay so the loop went through and as you see we have 1.35 iterations per second just to give you an idea of uh, range loop over 1000 iterations, we are getting uh, 17,000 iterations per second. So this is quite inefficient. So if you have a better idea, let me know in the comments below. But anyhow, let's take a look at the K lines dictionary now. And as you see, we have a key value here, which is the symbol name. And then we have a bunch of information such as the timestamp, open, high, low, close. And to understand what I'm doing in the next step, I'm showing you what I'm doing to this dictionary. So first of all, I'm wrapping that into a data frame for a particular symbol. So let's just start with the Bitcoin USDT. And with that, I'm getting a data frame like this, right? So again, timestamp, open, high, low, close. So this is the close column, right? And to get the close column, I'm just indexing for that. And with that, I'm getting a price series over the last one hour, minute data, right? And I can apply, um, yeah, cumulative return formula to this series. So I have to typecast the series as currently these are string values. You see it here, D type object. And then I can take the percentage change. And now you see I'm getting the percentage change every minute, right? And what I have to do is I just have to accumulate those returns to see how the asset was performing over the last 60 minutes or one hour. So I can do that with using plus one and then the product of that and subtract the one. And with that, I'm getting the uh, cumulative return of Bitcoin in relation to the US dollar over the last one hour, right? So I've explained cumul accumulating returns in another video on my channel, which I will link in the video description. So this is the main logic here, right? So let's apply that in a loop. So we are, we are storing the returns and the 
symbols in two empty lists here. And then we are looping through our relevant symbols again. And we are actually checking if we have entries in the, in the dictionary. So with that, I just want to avoid that we are getting error messages due to uh, non-tradable assets here, right? So I'm just excluding those with no entries. And now I'm defining my cumulative return and I'm just using the logic which I explained to you. So I'm creating a, a data frame for each iteration. Um, then I'm indexing for the fourth column here, convert that to a float value to make calculations possible, uh, apply a PCG change function, add a one, take the product out of that and subtract the one. And I'm appending that to my returns list and I'm also appending the symbol to my symbols list. All right, and now I can create a return data frame out of that. I'm calling that red df, uh, wrap the returns with the symbols as the index and set the column name to, uh, yeah, let's just say red. And with that, I'm getting a return data frame for all available uh, asset assets on Binance. So if I want to have the uh, 10 largest, let's say I can use it and largest here, take 10. And you see that over the last hour, NKN, Lazio, I think it's a, a football fan token um, was performing the best, right? And yeah, that's already it for this video. Would be quite interesting to build a bot out of that. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, which is just always screening for one or two or three best performing coins and then is buying them. And yeah, have a target profit and I don't know, stop loss or trading stop loss. So would be quite interesting as well. So I yeah, I thank you very much for watching. I hope this was adding value for you or, or at least was interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos.